প্রত্যেক ফসলের একটা নির্দিষ্ট সময়ে কিছু কিছু সময়তে পাস মানে তার জলের প্রয়োজনীয়তা হয় যেমন সোলানেসে ফ্যামিলির ক্ষেত্রে হয় যখন ফ্লাওয়ারিং আসে ফ্লাওয়ারিং স্টেজ গ্রোথিং স্টেজ আর হচ্ছে বার্ড যখন দাঁড়াবে এটা আমাদের মানে এই সময় যদি ইরিগেশানটাকে ঠিক মতোভাবে দেওয়া যায় তাহলে তার প্রোডাকশানটা ডেভেলপ হবে জল হচ্ছে এমন একটা সম্পদ যেটা হচ্ছে সঞ্চিত সম্পদ এটাকে যত আমরা মিসইউজ করব তত কিন্তু এটা আমরা অদূর ভবিষ্যৎকে শেষ করব ভালো জায়গাগুলোতে যে জল ধারা ধরে রাখার ক্ষমতা আছে আর কি যেগুলোতে সেগুলোতে আর কি জল ধরে রাখলে ভালো হয় Around 70% of the population in West Bengal depends on agriculture for their livelihood. But agricultural production has stagnated since the early 1990s. This decline can be attributed to two main factors. One is that the production costs have risen dramatically while market prices for the crops have hardly risen. The other is that smallholder farmers without access to water can only cultivate in the rainy season. This situation is critical because many people still lack food security in West Bengal. As a result, many people migrate for work and food during the dry season. West Bengal has adequate land and water resources for agriculture. The state receives water from the Ganges tributaries and in many places has plentiful rainfall and substantial groundwater. Three-fourth of the land is suitable for agriculture, but over 3.3 million hectares are divided into small plots of two hectares or less. Therefore, carefully adapted agricultural water management techniques could have great benefits for smallholder farmers. However, large-scale and sustainable adoption of agricultural water management options by poor people, especially women and tribal communities, remains a challenge. So in our work, uh, water management, ag agriculture water management is having major focus because that we think is the key for poverty elevation of tribal community who have lands otherwise but are uh, very new in, as far as agriculture as a livelihood source is concerned. They are second or third generation farmers. So they are not used to irrigated agriculture. Their practices are very traditional. It is essential to establish where people need water and will benefit from agricultural water management. Different contexts and livelihoods create different needs. Maps have been created by local stakeholders to capture these needs. By combining these with biophysical conditions such as surface or groundwater availability, it is possible to see where investments in agricultural water management can have the greatest impact by reaching to the maximum number of small holders. First uh, objective uh, of uh, this mapping exercise is to focus on people. Uh, for, for a long time we have been developing maps, uh, maps of potential, map of resources, etc. And they are very important. But our map starts with people, with uh, smallholders uh, in rural areas. And we first try to understand who they are, where they are, what their needs are, what type of farmers and other rural people we have there. Because uh, by doing that, we force ourselves to think about what kind of support these people need. Once we have done that, we could identify the places in the state where there is most need for uh, AWM solutions. The Agricultural Water Management Solutions Project was implemented from 2009 to 2012 to explore ways of improving access to water for smallholders. In West Bengal, Prasari, a local NGO and the FAO the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization led a dialogue process with farmers and local stakeholders in key locations across the state. They were supported by researchers from national and international organizations as well as Pradhan, a local NGO. A range of agricultural water management solutions were discussed to define options and constraints and to find ways to sustainably, equitably and cost-effectively achieve the greatest livelihood benefits.
It is often said that there is a technology ladder, that a farmer starts with the cheap, often manual technology, and moves up to more costly, motorized systems. Lessons from the use of treadle pumps suggests that this is not the case. Farmers in Koch Bihar district were among the first to use treadle pumps in the early 1990s. Later, the area benefited from cheap, lightweight Chinese diesel pumps. Now, electric pumps are popular as the electricity grid extends. Some farmers choose not to invest in treadle pumps, but to start with diesel or electric pumps. Those who cannot afford the investment cost rent motor pumps. The lessons are that the interest in a technology depends on the location, time and circumstances. Plus, cost is not the only factor. Other aspects such as availability and labor requirements play equally important roles. One agricultural water management option is the use of groundwater for agriculture. This would allow farmers to irrigate in the dry season. Natural aquifer recharge is high in West Bengal, but only 42% of the state groundwater resources are being exploited. Where no abnormal levels of salinity, arsenic or fluoride are reported, more groundwater could be used. A better general understanding of groundwater and the adoption of clear groundwater policies encouraging its use for irrigation without jeopardizing resources would benefit both farmers and the state. The changes are likely to have a profound impact on farmers, but the challenge will be in implementing these changes, ensuring that they reach the farmers and monitoring with them the impacts on the resources. Another option available to farmers is rainwater harvesting. Certain districts receive large amounts of rainfall in a short period. Most of this water is lost as runoff. Capturing this water can make all the difference. The hapas are one way of doing this. They are small ponds for storing rainwater built on individual farms. They should cover at least 5% of the land, possibly more. Their advantage is that they are owned by individual farmers who can decide how to use the water. They provide farmers with water for dry season irrigation and diversification of crops. They can support livestock and fish farming and even recharge of groundwater. In 2008, a program to experiment with hapas in Bankura district, west of Kolkata, was funded by the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme and implemented by Pradhan, a voluntary organization. As a result, small farmers have increased their incomes and raised themselves above the Indian poverty line. Those practicing fish farming have better nutritional and social status. Migration has declined, jobs have been created and more children are attending school. What one is talking about you know, in the Purulia approach is that try to manage uh, the, the resources at the micro level, at the level of each field, each uh, you know, uh, uh, piece of land, w conserve the water there itself and develop a farming system, a land use, which will ensure that the water captured locally uh, is used productively. So that is best done if you conserve it, especially in these terrains. If you conserve it in each piece of land, as close to the plant as, as, uh, as possible. But hapas are not cheap. They cost around 0.65 to 1.5 US dollars per cubic meter of water stored. They require technical expertise. Government or external investment should be considered to cover the high building costs because rainwater harvesting can impact household food security, reduce poverty and have wider benefits including groundwater recharge. Also, to make use of the hapas, the farmers need water pumps. A survey by the Agricultural Water Solutions Project found that 39% farmers use their own pump and 44% hire a pump. Promoting pump rental could mean that more poorer farmers can benefit. The adoption of agriculture water management options properly tailored to the varied needs of small farmers can significantly improve their livelihoods. If adopted on a large scale, they can benefit all the people of West Bengal. Om Bhurva Bhuva Swaha Tatsya Vitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dheem
Oh, 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 oh,